Hi, my name is Mr. Exum and welcome to my EdTech channel where I show you how to get the most out of technology in the classroom. This video shows you how to get started with Quizlet, how to create and copy sets and what all the different games are that students can play. It's really easy, so let's get started. So the first thing to do is to go to quizlet.com and sign up with an account. You can sign up with a Gmail, Google account, or with Facebook if you've got that already, or just enter a username and password and your date of birth to get started. So what is Quizlet? Well, it is a way of creating study sets, digital study sets. These are basically like uh, groups of flashcards. So you imagine a student normally would create a flashcard maybe with uh, a keyword on one side and the definition on the other, or a question on one side and an answer on the other. The Quizlet website then takes that study set and turns it into all sorts of different ways of learning that set of keywords, key information. Okay, so let's look at different ways you can create a study set. The first thing to do is to go up to the top and click Create and you get into the blank study set. Give it a title and a description and then you can start entering terms. So here we go, I'm gonna enter a term here. Now the amazing thing is it's predictive. So it already knew before I finished typing the word that I wanted that word. And the best thing is here is it automatically generates uh, definitions of that word from previous people who have made study sets. So I can pick one of these but I can also edit it. So if I don't like the answer, the definition, or you know my uh, syllabus has a slightly different definition, that doesn't matter, I can change it. It just helps to make it so much quicker by automatically generating the word. So very quickly, you can build up a study set. Notice how you can also add images for each one. Now when I click image, I can upload my own one but it will also give me uh, up images that match my word. I can keep going and adding cards. If I want to uh, change the order, then I can drag them up and down. If I want to add a card in between, I just hover till I find the plus. And if I want to delete one, I just click the delete the card. You'll also notice this add annotated diagram option here, which is a fantastic feature. Let's have a look at that quickly. So what I can do here is I can upload my an image. And then what I can do is I can click to choose points and I can add a term based on that point. So that is now linked to the mitochondria one. Click done. Nucleus, done. And it adds a really interactive uh, element to this whole study set. Um, you can add maps or paintings or all sorts of things to this. And when I'm done, I can click create. And I've got straight away ways that I can share that quiz. Um, I've got a link that I can send. Uh, if I go share on Firefly, it'll give me an embed code that I can copy and paste into a Firefly page or a Firefly task. And I could also add it to a particular class or a folder. Now if I create a class, then that will allow me to add students to that class and then they will specifically be led towards all my, all my different study sets. So we can keep all our study sets in one area and all the students, when they sign in, they can, they can click on their class and they'll see all those sets that are relevant to them. So that's a good way of doing it. So I quite often create a class and I click that plus button to add it to that class. Uh, so even if I'm gonna share it on Firefly, for example, um, or another platform, I will probably still add it to the relevant class who are going to be needing it to study with. But actually, you don't even need to do all of that because you can copy anybody else's set that's already on Quizlet and you can not only copy it, you can then edit it and tweak it to how you like. You can browse sets by clicking on Browse, choosing Subjects and Subcategories. However, it's probably easiest just to click on the search. So I'm going to search for GCSE biology cells and here we can see other people's sets these are some premium ones here uh, that you can purchase from uh, from publishers I can just choose the free option on the left and I can just scroll through and find a suitable set so here's one I've got 148 terms this one is a big one 
I can click on that for example and then I go actually I want to copy this I don't want to just use it I want to copy it and edit it well the button you want here is customize and here we go it's going to take me to that create page and I can change absolutely everything about this set I can go through I can delete ones I can edit them change them change the title uh, and then create that myself so I'm just going to put Mr. Exams, click create, and I've completely stolen that study set. Very, very simple. Now when you're on your area, on your home page, and you've got all your sets, you may have organized them into folders, or maybe they're just uh, listed under sets here. If you want to look at them, obviously you just click on one, and then you've always got these options here. It's important to have a look at this add this set to a class or a folder so I can now do that retrospectively I can edit it I can get back into those share options if I want um, I can get some more information on this in terms of who's been studying it very useful uh, I can't do class progress unless I've upgraded to the full teacher so you can't get real data on each individual student unless you upgrade but what you can see which is great is scores which will give me all the high scores for the different games the students have been playing so this is a really nice thing to be able to see here and I can also get that embed code to embed it into a VLE uh, or another website if I click the print option what's quite nice is I've got different ways of printing I can print it like a list uh, to put into their files I could do little cards I can do uh, the actual flashcards themselves uh, and it will turn it into a PDF that's easily printable or shareable with them so Quizlet has various engaging activities and games that allow students to study uh, this content in lots of different ways. So I'm just going to quickly review each of those. So the first one is study flashcards. And this is, as it says, pretty straightforward. You've got each of the uh, terms here and then you click to see the, uh, the term or the definition on either side of the flashcard. If you go full screen, then the students can also uh, get it get it read out to them so they can play and work their way through each of these learn creates a sort of adaptive study review which helps guide the students from sort of basic understanding to mastery they get a mixture of different question types which get uh, harder based on how they're progressing write prompt students for the term and they must type in the corresponding definition On spell, the students will uh, be able to hear the word being read aloud and they'll see the definition uh, and they just need to be able to spell that correctly. Tests are great. Uh, you click on test and it will automatically generate a very quick test for them based on that study set. Very, very helpful. And actually, you click on options, you've got all sorts of uh, ways of customizing this. In terms of how whether it starts with the term or the definition, what types of questions uh, there are, um, and so it can be shuffled around and changed up. Every time you go back to the test, it will have uh, done another random set of questions based on that study set. The two sort of fun games here are Match and Gravity. Uh, it's really good fun to be able to set yourself uh, goals of trying to beat your fastest times, but also beat your friends' times and get to the top of that leaderboard which your teacher can see. So the first one with match is basically like pairs. You've got to make everything disappear. And so you want to try and uh, drag them onto the correct uh, answers. On gravity, you have to protect the planets from incoming asteroids. Again, you've got some different options here. So I've got to type it in before it gets to the bottom to destroy it and I will get a high score based on how I get on. Now students won't see this eighth option but if I log back in as a teacher you will see another option and this is the live option. This is where it brings it into the classroom environment. All those other games you could be doing in class, they could be working on them individually for 10 minutes or whatever at the end of the lesson but um, they're working on their own and most of it really is for studying independently. Um, but the live games are ones that you can play as a class and they are great fun. So if I click live as a teacher, I can host a live game. And I've got two options, teams or individuals. If I'm doing it in classroom environment um, and not remotely, I will choose teams. If it's remote learning they're doing, I would select individuals. For now, I'm going to choose teams. Click select. 
And what it will do is it will give me a code uh, here, which I will display on the classroom board and students will be able to join in. Once I've got more than four players, it will automatically assign them into teams and we'll be able to have a live game. Okay, so I've got four players in here. I can start, it will put them into two teams and then we click start game. And on their device, they will have a set of four options and potentially they will have the correct answer, uh, but actually it might be somebody else on the rest of their team who has the correct answer. If they get the wrong answer, then it will go back to zero and it's the first team to get to the end of the line to win the game. If you do this on individual mode, they won't be in teams, it will be each individual student doing it on their own, not working together as a group. So there you go, a really useful study tool for students and a fun way to engage your class with live games. For now though, I hope that was useful and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. See you next time.